what's up what's up what's up everybody oh my god today's the first time i'm actually a little bit late three minutes late to my own interview can you imagine this so for those of you who um don't know what we're doing this is the martine show we come on here every tuesdays and thursdays at 8 p.m est where we celebrate people we celebrate uh, people with their projects, their businesses, their brands, and it's all about self, um, self love journey, basically self awareness, self development, and everything social. Everything that we discuss comes straight from the interviewee. I'm the interviewer normally, but for today we're gonna change the game. So for today I will be interviewed by GQ of those people who will be on at eight thirty exactly, just to let you guys know. So he will be asking me question as opposed to um, me asking people questions. So I will be interviewed today. So I was getting ready for that and showed up just a few minutes late. Okay. What's up? 365 Affirmations Phoenix Gives. Thank you so much for being on, sis. I'm going to share the live now so I could let people know that we're on. And... Oh my God, it is so warm in my space right here. It is so hot. How is the weather by you, Phoenix? So for those who are in the Texas area, I just want to reach out and pretty much uh, reach out my hand and let you all know that I have you all in prayers and um, it is quite devastating that you guys are going through a very bad winterization process. Um, but I pray that everybody stays safe and, you know, we continue to have you all in prayer so that you guys could make it through into calmer waters, better days. 365 affirmations, then, oh, okay. All right. Cold and then warm. Well, it's pitch white by me. It is snowing and I'm enjoying it. Actually, this is probably my third or fourth storm. No, this is the third storm in New York for 2021 and I'm actually enjoying it. I see we haven't had snow in four years, basically, to tell you the truth. We have not had snow at all. So this is straight up a purification process. Mother nature purification process that we are going through and I'm embracing it all. Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, it is menopausal. It's been menopausal. We it's it's cold now for us. Um but at the same time it was warm uh j just about a few days ago. We had like 50 degrees. Mr. Ranch Turner, Asia Tick, welcome aboard. Oh my goodness. Joy Miranda, welcome aboard. Asia Tick is Voss and Bridges, everybody. Just to let you all know, that is Mr. Ranch Turner and his son's brand, where he was actually the interviewee uh, on Tuesday here, where we honored him for Black History Month, and he came back to give us updates on his business that is actually flourishing. So by all means, please follow Asia Tick, who's right here on the live with us, and uh, check out their apparel. It's a social entrepreneurship type of business to black men who are making strides in entre social entrepreneurship. Hi, Joy Miranda. It's been a long time. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. Well, you're going to have the privilege to have a very special time tonight because I'm waiting for GQ to come on. He should be here around 830. And he's going to be interviewing me. So I'm going to be the interviewee for the first time. And um, we're going to see how that goes. He has a slew of questions, basically, that uh, people have submitted to him. And by all means, if you do have a question and you didn't get to submit to him, you can put your question right here. And GQ and I will be able to go through them and answer. Dwayne Hurt, D Hurt. Oh, my goodness. Dwayne Hurt, one of... 
the most committed fans of the Martine show, for real. I got to give you props, Dwayne Hurt. I got to give you a whole lot of props. Once Dwayne Hurt came onto the show, like he started watching the show, he got hooked and never left. And finally, when he got on to have his interview, he was like, oh my goodness, I want another interview. So Dwayne Hurt, by all means, so much love to you, so much respect for you, because he is one of the most committed fans of the Martin Show. Ricky Valero, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for supporting. Tonight is a special time that we're going to have where we're waiting for GQ to come through so that he could interview me tonight. I'm going to be the interviewee on the set right here. Yes, you sure do love this show, Dwayne. And thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. A whole lot of love there. How is the weather by you, Dwayne? I know, I think you're in Maryland, right? How is the weather by you? Cold and icy, okay. Yeah, it's pitch white by me, it's very snowy. It's cold. Like I was saying, we're probably, I think, on our third snowstorm at this present time. But then again, we haven't had snow in like four and a half years. So, so you know, just letting Mother Nature do its thing. We snowed in and expecting to get more. Yes, we got more yesterday. It was so funny. When I watched the forecast, it said... Well, two days ago now, I watched the forecast that said midday for today for the snow to start. I woke up this morning about 7.30. I kid you not, it was covered. So it must have started like at 5 a.m. in the morning. And I remember um, one of my mom's friends came through here. And he was just like, didn't you say that it was going to start midday? I got up this morning and all of a sudden I'm like, no, it can't start because it should be midday. That's what you said. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I read. But apparently the forecast was wrong, you know, so it was funny. They made a whole joke about me telling me that I could I didn't read properly or whatever the situation was. But we got a whole lot of snow and then it's going to supposed to continue on what was sleeping. And then we're going to get a lot more um I guess towards the morning and stuff so yeah but i'm loving it i'm embracing it it is what it is the good thing about me is that i'm working from home i've been working from home since the beginning of covid so i'm in <laughs> mr ranch turner says he wished they would get snow let me tell you a lot of people who um there are people who originate from new york and then when they move to other places they do wish upon that because it's just nice to see. It's nice to experience. But when you don't have it anymore at all at times, you know, it could be annoying. But, you know, there's cleanup. There's a whole lot of other stuff that comes to with it. But overall, it's, it's beautiful to see. Dwayne Hurt. This is the most snow we had here in Baltimore. Like, yes, yes. Like I said, New York. I mean, four and a half years, almost five years. We haven't had any snow at all. And think about it. We're supposed to have snow because snow is purification for the soil. You know, we got to clean up. We got to clean out. You know, it removes a whole lot of stuff. So having it now is, is actually a good thing for us. It really is. Oh, rain and icy, Ranch Turner, yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of rain, a lot of rain before. We sure did have a lot of rain back and forth, but now it's all snow. <laughs> it's all snow. Nothing but snow by us. Joseph! 
what's up? How's work? How's everything going? Great to have you on, Joseph. I'm sure you probably submitted your questions to GQ too. If not, you could always put your questions here as we go on with the show when GQ goes comes on. He should be on by 8.30ish. You were cooking on the grill like at 3 a.m. And then all the... Yo, you... <laughs> Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne, you're going to have to uh, have a cooking show. Why don't you just do a cooking show for your a YouTube channel or something? He's forever cooking. Joseph, is that a new position that you have at work or is just a change of schedule? You might as well do a cooking show, um, Dwayne, because you're always cooking anyway. I mean, I remember there was a time where you would constantly show the stuff that you're cooking. But, you know, you could use so many different mediums out there, you know, um, for video. It doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube. Oh, joy. Yeah. But they haven't had any contests in a while. You realize they don't have any more contests happening with Rizzle. Maybe they took a break or something. And I hope everything is going well with your son as well, because I know the mommy duties. Dwayne, all oh, your family going to show out on this show? That'll be good. We get to see the fans. So I guess everybody cooks on, on, on in the family. You might put, put it on Patreon. Maybe you want to do it on Vimeo. You know? But either way, whatever you um, utilize for it, one way or the other, I think that it would it would be good. You could actually do two both. You could do YouTube, and then like you could do YouTube in a way where you demonstrate, like you you talk and teach about, I guess, what you're doing. But then you reach a point where it's like you want to get the full video to the end point, then go to Vimeo and then pay for whatever, or go to Patreon and then you know, get the full thing. You could, you could do it so many different ways. I mean, it's just really up to you. They can cook better than you. <laughs> oh, you, you cook the best ribs. Okay. They had three episode series. Yeah, the three episode series. I mean, how did you do with that? Like, I don't know. Like, how you guys feeling about that? When it comes to Rizzle with that three episode series thing, because I mean, it, three three shots you get, you know, for people to vote for you, but people are not even voting anymore. They took out the voting thing too. Did they take out the voting thing, Joy? Because I don't even see that. Like, I don't even know if that's an option anymore. Yeah, Vimeo is actually pretty good. I'm thinking about doing a, a whole Vimeo movement um coming but i gotta finish up what i'm working on right now which you guys will hear on the interview part when gq comes before i even go and start that whole vimeo journey oh you joy when do you not win you always winning you won third prize that's awesome congratulations i'm glad you happy because you're always on the leaderboard Dwayne uninstalled Rizzo on his phone now. <sighs> Dwayne, why do you have to uninstall? Just leave it on. <laughs> I have it 
it on my phone. I go back every week because I do the show. I post. I mean, there are some videos that I should go back and answer. That would be a really nice thing, don't you think? I think that would be good. <laughs> some videos that I've been tagged on. Um, but I've been given so many awards when it comes to the videos. Like, I would watch and I would just, like, give an award. You know, that little award thing that they got going on. And I would just, like, you know, so... That's the way that's working with me. But yeah, I'm I'm still in Rizzo. I mean, I have over 30,000 people. Like, why would I leave Rizzo? I'm just going to keep doing my promos on there. There's just no doubt about that. Uh, Joy, maybe they took a break with the RCVs and 360 contest. I don't know. It's just all of a sudden, it looked like um everything just like stopped. And then one person was saying that there was a possibility where maybe the funds... um ran out for the time being i don't know i don't know what truth is to that but that's what somebody was saying to me and um yes yeah. sam what's up oh my goodness sam thank you so much for being with us i'm so happy i hope everything's going well by you how is the weather where you are sam how is the weather where you are You came on for a special show today because I'm going to be the interviewee. GQ is going to be asking me a few questions based on what was delivered to him in terms of what people want to ask me. And that's where we at. Rain and snow. Okay. So, yeah. We're, by me, New York, everything is pitch white. You know, winter wonderland. I mean, winter wonderland. Actually, I'm going to try to do a video tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on Rizzo so I can show you guys. And then I'll share it in my stories. That's, yeah, well, that's one thing. I haven't done a snow video. I should have done that before I actually cleaned up today. But <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'll, I'll drop it on my Street Vibes channel. That'll be perfect. Something for me to put on Rizzo. So I could get my viewers pumping, my followers going. Yeah, the whole country. My cousin who's actually in, in um, Texas, he's in Dallas, Texas. This is the first time where they actually experience winter, you know. Um, and unfortunately, two days ago, he and his family ended up sleeping in their car. And from sleeping in their car, then they ended up at a hotel. They didn't have any hotels, rooms available um, at the time. So they had to sleep in their car. And then the next day, what they had to do is um, there was a gas shortage. So um, that was like another issue. But they have no electricity, no water, no power, Um you know, now they're back at home today. They, they made it back at home today, but they have absolutely no water, you know, no heat because everything over there is electrical. Um, you know, there's no winterization process. And, you know, the sad part about this whole thing is that um, the United States had been excluded with the last administration that's not here anymore. Um, had United States had been ex excluded from the whole climate change conferences because the last administration removed the U.S. from those conferences. So whatever was discussed in terms of preparation on the U.S. side to have for winterization, the United States was never represented and they never got it. So that's the reason why now a lot of people from the South are going through what they're going through because basically... Global warming is real. Climate change is real. And thank God now we're back connected with the whole um, climate change conference and updates. So they could basically, um, you know, move forward and get the updates and do what needs to be done. Mr. G, intelligent brother, what's up, Faith? Mitch Savage, oh my goodness, welcome aboard everybody, GQ will be here by 8.30 to start the interview, so I'm just entertaining y'all before we get into the hot topics. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, he said that. I mean, technically, I don't know. Maybe because I'm a strong person, and maybe another strong person will understand. I don't agree with his with his statement because in his position, he shouldn't be saying anything like that. But technically and truthfully speaking, it is actually correct that that's what happens. The strong do survive, but at the same time, it's incorrect for him to be saying that in his position as a mayor. So I, I get what you're saying. Shamu! Welcome. Oh my God. Everybody's here for the hot show. Oh. Okay, that's excellent, Joy. Patience, patience, patience. That is something that we all need to pick up on, you know, one way or the other. Whatever phase you are in your life, we all need patience, you know. I think when it comes to patience now in my life, I'm like, I'm laid back to the point where I'm just chilling. <laughs> But at the same time, you know, I get stuff done. Like, nobody's going to come and fool me, you know. But at the same time, like, I'm I'm relaxed. I'm so relaxed. Yeah, Joseph, that, that's, that was not good. That was not good at all. Dwayne Hurt is on Rizzo. He actually tagged me the other day. I should go answer him so that he could answer me back. <laughs> He's on Rizzo. He just be playing. He's in and out. I'll just, just leave it on your phone. There's no big thing. He's back on though. That's why he went and tagged me about his movie. I saw it. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go answer. Don't worry. I'm gonna answer you. I, I probably gave you an award already. <laughs> I probably sent you I sent all you guys awards All you guys who tag me I send you all awards But at the same time I'm going to start answering something But I, I, I post when it comes to the Martin show all the time Every week, twice a week I post And then I answer maybe like The first two or three that, that I see Then I'll I be out You got three awards? Well, go see who gave them to you because it probably was all me. <laughs> Shamoon, you are in love with my laugh. You always comment about my laugh. <laughs> Shamoon, if you tag me, I'm going to give you an award. You know that. Okay, it's guaranteed. So if you want an award, just let me know. <laughs> just tag me. <laughs> oh, guys, one thing while we're waiting. GQ's in the house. GQ's in the house, guys. I was just about to say something, but GQ came through. So we are going to go straight into what tonight is all Hi. <laughs> I am so so sorry for the wait. No problem. Uh, you know, I told you it was no problem. Man, uh, had a little uh, had a little hiccup of an event today. Um, didn't really go the way I wanted. Nah, it's just technical technical issues. Um, and it was frustrating because I, I spent literally all night with no sleep testing all of the equipment, trying to plan for any and every possible scenario. And then when I get there, thinking that everything is going to work out, Wi-Fi connectivity issues and technical issues, it was just, it was a mess. But, um, you know, I, I, I'll take the loss and I'll just, I'll just learn from it. So it is, okay. it is what it is. But it's not about me today. It's not about me today. It is about you, Martine. So, um, all right. 
before I get into all these other questions that I have here, uh, first of all, intelligent brother Joseph Wrench Turner, Shamu. We're gonna talk about one division tomorrow. Boz is in oh, the yeah. house. Wow. Wow. What's up, Boz? Yeah, Bars, man. Bars was with me, man. Um, you know, thank you so much we, for the support. We, we we went through it together. You know, it was a tough it was a tough break, but you know what? We're gonna grow from it. So, um, mm -hmm. all right, let's let's get to these questions. Okay. Um, all right. So this one from our brother DC. Ooh. How has the Martine show changed your life? Oh, <laughs> that's that's a lot. That's a big one. Okay. How has it changed my life? Um, one thing I want to let you guys know, like, the way I came up with the whole self-love journey thing, it wasn't just haphazard, you know? It is definitely something that I needed to get more into within myself. So, in order for it to take place more or less in my life, I noticed that I needed accountability. So right. with that being said, I had to find a constructive way for me to find some sort of consistency in not only delivering the love that I have for people, but also having that love transpired into me. And this is how mm -hmm. really the Martine show kind of like debuted and it came up and it started to really come into fruition. And then it all got into like, okay, I'm trying to be more aware of who I am as a person and who I've become from the time that I've connected with you guys until now. So that's how self-awareness came up. And mm -hmm. then as I'm moving forward, Okay, self-development consistently start was happening within me. So that's why the second part of the show is self-development, where I right. would ask questions about how are you growing, what are you doing in your business, blah, blah, blah. So that gave me the responsibility and accountability for me to move forward on my side, on my business end, because you guys were, you guys became like indirectly my business partners, you know, right? Like, you guys motivated me, you guys inspired me, and I went and I did my thing, you know. And it's like, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Let me figure this, let me figure how to do this. Like, I was able to create a very nice timeline for myself and mm -hmm. grow as I was helping you guys grow. So it was a constant learning type of thing. You know, for me, asking you questions, you know, everybody that came here and then I learned from you guys. And then I went and I did my thing on what I needed to do. Like, I gained so much clarity from the mm -hmm. show. You know, mm -hmm. it's funny that you said that because that question was from D.C. And you said clarity as in moment of clarity. Yeah. Like D.C. And, you know, I'm just thinking about, like, the fact that that question is from D.C. I mean... If you guys have been watching DC's page, you know, DC has like grown so much. And mm -hmm. yeah. to just be in his space, to be around somebody like that is 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 actually a gift. Okay. Right. It is a gift because you don't normally find that type of motivation just like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And his consistency is something that I admire at a 100 he's a machine he's a machine yeah. he doesn't stop yes and even though he is not in the same like we're not in the same business but the fact that he is progressing makes me want to progress too in my yeah. world mm -hmm. and I love, it. I love it so i i love mm -hmm. and appreciate that question. all right we got another quote we got actually we have one, two, three, four, five questions. Oh, no, yeah. four questions. From, four questions from Mr. Dwayne Hurt. Shouts out to oh, Dwayne. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So let, let, let's start with question number one from Dwayne Hurt. What inspired you to start writing? Um, healing, healing, healing. Um, from the time that I was very, very young. Um, background 
going from my childhood, basically. Um, okay, so let's put it like this. I was born, and then three months later, my father passed. So my mom was oh, yeah. with me and a whole new life that she was not prepared for. So my mom was in her 20s, right? And I was raised with basically my mom and my mom's family, my dad's family on that end, basically, um, if you want to put it in a nutshell, is that they disappeared. So I pretty much was abandoned on that side, you know, mm -hmm. and always questioning why, why me, why am I living like this? You know, why is it that I was born three months later, my father died and I'm watching mm -hmm. my mother grieve through her process, you know, and she's working and doing everything, you know, as a single mom and having family help and all that stuff. But it was a constant struggle. And when you have a parent that is suffering, you either indirectly or directly suffer as well with that yeah, parent. Yeah. You know? Because you feel and, you feel their pain. Yeah, you feel their pain. So watching her like weep out and cry sometimes the breakdowns or the upsets or and then it, it in, interrelatedly played with me where it's like she was extra protective extra cautious but like certain places she don't want me to go she doesn't want me mm -hmm. to hang out with this person you know that person so a lot of things became a little more rigid where by the time i became a teenager it was like a lot of pressure you know, and it's like it could be because she was very overprotective of you as well. Yeah, overprotective. And then at the same time, but it was all out of love. by all means. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was like constant pressure on all sides because it's like, you know, I'm the only child. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to, you know, you just want to make everything be copacetic type of thing. Like everything got to be good. And yeah. I lived my life to kind of put it in a way to perfect myself so that I can be like received the right way by my mom, by my family, you know, so I don't have any issues because I never like confrontation. I never like to be mm -hmm. questioned. So everything about this is all about healing. I started, mm -hmm. I remember the first time that I just took a notebook and I was I started writing. It was because I just wanted to release my emotions, you know. It's I like mean, therapy. I started writing and that was with affirmations, you know. I would write I am statements all the time. I would take I am and put an objective behind it, you know. What where, right. where people would say normally like I am loving, I'll be like no, I am love, you know. People would be like I am like I would be like I am beauty. You know, stuff like that. You know, if I want something like I am money, you know, I would write that. That was an affirmation for me. And it, and it still is today. You know, I am abundance. That's stuff like that I would write. And it's just constant. So that's how I started writing. And then it became a routine. Every mm -hmm. morning I would wake up and I would write like maybe seven statements. Close it. I pray. Be gone. Every day. Seven statements. Close it. I pray. Be gone. You know? Right. And then it was like life goes on. You go through many different things and ups and downs, you know, then I'm at a point where I, I'm in relationships and all that, you know, and I'm just like, I feel like I need a voice. I feel mm -hmm. like I need, I need my voice to be heard, you know? So it was so funny when I said that I needed my voice to be heard, I literally heard it within myself. Like, like you're going to be part of a group where you will be able to express yourself. And that's when all of a sudden I remember I joined Facebook and then one lady from another, I didn't know who these people were. They invited me to a group and I ended up in a group where it was all about women empowerment. And oh, wow. the, the movement was for each woman in that group, to share a personal story for them. And that was my first story out of a book with 200 women. And that's how I became an author. Wow. And that's how the journey started, just like that. It just fell into place. It just, yeah. It just fell into place. Was, wow. 
it just fell into place. So it's all about healing. And then it just went on and on and on. And I just continued. And the affirmation thing is, is very powerful because words, words are powerful. It's, it's, yes, uh, it's one of those things where it's, it's like power of the spoken word. The more you speak things into existence, the more they manifest to become real things. They do. If and you, you know what? In those things. You know what? That's why, like, when you see my postings on Instagram, you know, uh, I have a lot of quotes that I put together. And even if I share different quotes, a lot of them will be revolved around law of attraction. Because law of attraction is all that I've been doing in my life with these affirmations for the longest time before I even knew about what law of attraction really was, you know? But I just knew that I felt good saying, like, I would look in the mirror and be able to say, like, you know, I am beauty. Like, why not? You know, why can't I be money? I want to be money today. I'm money today. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, like I am life. Like I remember one time where I felt so depleted and I wrote down, like I was out of energy. I was out of everything. Like I felt like even water was not enough for me because I was so dehydrated. And I just wrote down, I am life seven times. Mm. I meditated, prayed on it. And I kept writing, I am life. And I remember that time I felt so down that that I am life statement was like the whole week for seven days. Wow. I did it. Like it was a regiment. Now, was, it, was, there, was there a particular reason why you chose seven? Seven is, um, spiritually speaking, you know, is a spiritual number, is a good luck number, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, within religion, Catholicism, number seven is like, you know, a, a prime, um, let's say, manifestation number, you know. Yes, yeah, so, like, the, like the, the divine, divine number of completion. Exactly. And, um, a lot of times when you when you want to request, when you want to ask for something, you would put it in the form of a seven. But when mm-hmm. you want to make that request come into total completion, like this is it done, completed, like you're closing the box, then you can yeah. turn it into a nine because that's the number of completion. Right. And that's um, numerology, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He also wants to know when did you start interviewing people? Um, I actually started interviewing people myself when I started with you guys on the Martin show. Before nice. that, I was the one always being interviewed wherever I went to because of my authorship, you know, and I was always on the receiving side. Mm-hmm. And I came to a point where honestly I pretty much wanted to have like my own crowd of people, my own group. I wanted to formulate my own, not so much formulate my own movement, but I wanted to create my own tribe. You know, it's like when you're being interviewed and that's something that you guys should take notes on, on on this for whatever thing that you're doing, when you're being Mm -hmm. interviewed consistently, Okay, it's a beautiful thing. You feel that you're important. You're on high, blah, blah, blah. You're on demand. It's all good. But at the same time, there's nothing like having your own tribe. Because when you create yeah. your own tribe, no matter what you do, you could always go to that tribe and be like, listen, I'm doing this. I need y'all to support me. You know what I mean? Those are your mm-hmm. people. Okay. Yeah. So it's like that's that's the reason why a lot of people they will create their own email marketing database because that's why they tell you the money's in the list. Yeah, I got my people. The first room of people who are gonna know what I'm doing is my database, and which is start what I started creating with the interviews, um, getting people to schedule themselves, you know, the group, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You got to have your own thing because yeah. other than that, you're kind of like renting other people's space because you're pretty much in other people's space when you're on the other side. And you're not spending time creating your own identity at the same time. So Exactly. Yeah. No, I agree. And you have limitations. Um, you have limitations when you're yeah. on the other side too. You know, when you have your own tribe, you be like, look, A, B, C, this is what I'm doing, blah, 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 whoever's with it, let's get it. And that's it. Definitely. Definitely. Now, this was a good question that, that Dwayne had. He said, if you had a chance to put the Martine show 
on a cable network, which one would you choose and why? Ooh, that's a big question. Ah, all right. Cable network. All right. Um, well, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. I mean, to tell you the truth, the cable network that I love to enjoy, like to really watch so far, has been OWN. You know? Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, would it be a conflict of interest if you chose OWN? You know? But um, I don't know. Now that you're saying that, I don't know. I don't know. But that's all that, that comes to my head, you know. But if we want to go to the more lower end type of cable networks, um, I know Comcast is doing pretty good. Roku is doing very mm -hmm. well, you know, and stuff. Yeah. So why not, you know? Okay. And then he had a deep, final deep question from Dwayne. How are you mentally? Mentally, I'm very well compared to where I was back last year. You know, mentally, at this yeah. point, I am mentally sound, balanced. You know, um, last year, 2020, even when I started um, Rizzle, I was, I was not mentally all there. I had some disturbances. I had things bothering me. I had some uncertainties, confusions, just, I guess, you know, with the impact of the world and then it becomes a personal impact and knowing basically how are you going to manage mentally, spiritually, emotionally, even physically, mm -hmm. you know, but then at this point now, I'm, I'm so comfortable in my space where <laughs> It's like, I, I don't think I want to change it. <laughs> I mean, I work from home, which is mm -hmm. really a blessing at this present time. I've been working mm -hmm. from home since March 16, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just here with the computer. You know, I only mm -hmm. step out when I need to in terms of going to the groceries or whatever. My car mm -hmm. does not move unless it's a major must. So I haven't put gas in my car since I don't know when. I probably put gas maybe uh, once a month. If that, that must be nice. Okay. Must be nice. So, so I've been saving money, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been investing, you know. Wow. I mean, think about it. You know what I mean? I'm spending money on gas every week. So that must be nice. Think about it. Like, I'm not on a like I'm not on a schedule. I'm not on a rigid schedule like I used to be. I'm basically I'm free. I sit down, I do my videos, I get on Instagram, I drop something for you guys. I go on Facebook. I like to do articles and whatnot on my personal page on Facebook. I drop something that is meaningful to people. Like I had a post on global warming. It went like people went crazy with that. You know, I go on Clapper. I, I drop some healing notes. You know, prayer meditation we do. And that's it. And I come and I do the mm -hmm. Martin show Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on Rizzo, and I get the, the Martin show. This is what's happening. Crossover. And then I work. You know? And then on my, you know, and then in, in between time, whenever the schedule permits, because uh, my boyfriend is on a crazy schedule himself. So, yeah, we meet and we chill. But, like, so I that you work out on the for yourself. Yeah, it worked out. No stress. Nice. All right. Intelligent brother. Intelligent oh. brother, you know, what inspired you to be an author? I think that same question is also from Elena Rivers. What inspired you to write? Elena Rivers, um, um, like I said, it was all healing. All healing. Um, I'm I'm really like an advocate for healing because I've come to the point to realize how intricate healing is and how important it is. And people don't realize that a lot of us kind of like um, underestimate what healing is all about. 
You know, when you talk about healing, a lot of people think about religion. It is it is not mm-hmm. only that. Like religion is only one aspect of it. But you have a spiritual aspect, you know, and healing comes in many different forms. You know, like I read a passage from the Bible every morning, you know, and the way it works, it's not a plan. It's just like when I open wherever the pages land, that's the passage that I read. You know, it always ends up working out to be to be one that you needed at that time. Exactly. You know, and stuff. Um, I, I pray with candles. I do candle work, you know. And that helps me a lot. You know, it helps me center myself and renew my concentration. Because sometimes, you know, you can be totally off on something or you respond to somebody totally nasty. Meanwhile, it's not the person or you probably going to be like, oh, I don't like the way they spoke to me. It's not so much the person sometimes. Sometimes there's an imbalance on your side that you're unaware of. You know what I mean? We have chemical imbalances but we also have mental and spiritual imbalances too. And a Mm -hmm. lot of times our imbalances comes from maybe the things that we put in our system, you know, the things that we eat, the things that we drink, how much we consuming on a daily basis. You know, are you consuming a lot of sugar? Are you consuming a lot of alcohol, whatever? So all of that in a nutshell is all part of healing. And I became pretty much become aware of all these different parts to start making changes and adjusting my life accordingly so that I can feel better about myself. You know, so it's, mm-hmm. it's you and it's never yeah. ending. It's a constant moving journey. Cause you're constantly growing. <laughs> exactly. And every time you're growing, you put it going to another level, you know? So it's like, all right, whatever I knew before, that's all good now. I pretty much need to so that I can learn the new stuff. Like you have to come with a um a clean canvas all the yeah. time. You, you have to I think, think, you know, I think that's very right. important because a lot of people have a habit of getting set in their own way and they feel like they know better. So when somebody comes comes to them with a, a whole different uh, point of view, they're so set in their ways that they don't want to receive it. And they could be missing out on a blessing because of it. No, you got to empty out. Like, your cup cannot be full all the time. You know? Mm-hmm. You can't, like, when I, when I decided that I was going to do this show and I realized the value in it and the consistency, I had to empty out. So that I could be speaking to one of you guys. Because the thing about it is that we all come from different worlds. The world that yeah. I come from is maybe not the world that you come from. So in order to receive people, I had to put myself kind of like in a small space so that I can like have an empty cup so you guys could pour into. And as you're pouring in, then I know how to revert back to you guys with questions. Because notice that none of what I, I do is rehearsed. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, it's, it's all sensory. All mm-hmm. All sensory for me. So it, it, it takes a lot. It takes concentration. It, it, it takes, you know, for me to really pay attention, you know, because it's like, okay, I could, I could ask a question, but am I going to ask a valuable question that is in continuity with what you just said? Yeah. You know, I have to make it flow. Mm-hmm. I can't rely on you as the interviewee to make it flow for me. Exactly. So it takes a lot. And, and then you learn how to segue into the other things based exactly. on what the person is saying in their answer. Exactly. So it turns and out to be a skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It it's is hard. hard. Um, Emarie, Emarie Whitaker. What? She asked, how did you get started on social media? Okay. Um. To tell you the truth, I opened my first social media account that was Facebook. That was in 2010. And when I opened it, it was just to connect with family, you know. And there was an urge for me to connect really and to try to locate family on my dad's side, you know, because we were all disconnected and a lot of us were lost back then. Okay, So it was 
for me to get on. So when I, I remember when I got on, and little by little, a few years later, because you know they noticed my last name, they were just like, "Wait a minute, who's your father?" You know, it's like, "Who's your grandfather?" Like, you know, type of thing. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh my, God, "My cousin." Da, da, da. So that's how we got connected. That's how I got into my first social media that was Facebook. But I know what question she's asking. She's asking more into the social media movement. The social mm-hmm. media movement started in 2015. Okay. 2015 when I became an author. Let me tell you something. Becoming an author doesn't take anything out of it. It could you could wake up today and be an author tomorrow. Trust and believe me. Okay. But when you need but to not start everybody could, not everybody could be an award winning author though. <laughs> Trust me. So. But listen to this. No, but the road to authorship, like to have written published documents. Okay, it's like that, like simple mm-hmm. like that. Okay, but when you become an author, one thing I need to let people know: just because your book is out there, that doesn't mean that you're going to make money. You have to market. Okay, you have to market, and that's one thing I started to learn from the group of ladies that I was around because some of them were ready for into the game. You know, mm-hmm. I started learning how to market and it was so funny as I'm learning how to market, like, you know, you wanna get a you gotta get a website, you know, you wanna start um collecting people's data and stuff so you can start building your own database and all that step by step. From twenty fifteen, a little, little, little I would say by the time I got to twenty eighteen like I pretty much had a clear vision as to what I needed to do because it took it took being around people number one it took taking classes you got to put out money okay it yeah. took taking classes okay it took attending conferences there was a time that before COVID I was at a conference every week okay I was at a conference where I was attending I was at a conference where I was speaking okay and just because you're speaking, all right, there are speaking engagements that you're going to have that are going to be, that are gonna be you know, no fees, which is no money, and you're going to have speaking engagements where you're going to make money, okay? And in order to get those where you're going to make money, your marketing got to be put together. Like, mm. you got to be crispy, clean, you know what I mean? Yeah, so Because so, you, you speaking, you're selling yourself in the book. Exactly. And the thing about it with my story with the faces of uterine fibroid, the thing about it is that it's a storyline basically that relates to every woman basically on earth at this present time. Whether they know somebody who had it, whether they had it themselves, or they know somebody of somebody else, or it could be a family member who had it, you know. So it relates to everybody, you know. So I remember when that time when the book came out um that was actually in 7 2017 it came out in may actually yeah 2017 once it came out that book was like the hit of the hit mm. forget about the previous two books that i was part of like three books before that i was part of it didn't matter that book right. Like this, the one this that one. Has my name on the outside, that my ontology that I created with my long lost soul crying story, and I had other people share their crying story because it's, it's sad. It's a sad situation, you know, a health situation. That book just went whoop, all over the place. Everybody wow. wanted me, everywhere, everywhere. So, in between work and all that stuff, I was constantly. And I said, in between work and everything, it was virtual something like classes online, you know, taking courses, or going to a conference, or speaking at a conference, always representing somewhere. Even if I went to, like, people would invite me to be a vendor, you know, to sell my book at their event. Like, they, I want you, at, I want you to have a table. I want you to be there. So it's, it's usually the other way around. Where vendors ask permission to be able to sell their stuff at an event. They not ask you. And, and you know what? I still get requests now. And I just tell people, honestly, like some people are still doing outside events. And honestly, I was like, you know what? Based on 
my history and based on what the world is going through, I have come to the point where I'm very strict with my appearances unless it's virtual because I do not want to expose myself. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, but if, if I was not that strict with myself, I would be everywhere. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe I could have perfected something at this point. But I would just be everywhere. You know? So they, they, they still hit me up. They still hit me mm -hmm. up. Man. And then they don't learn. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, th oh, this this is gonna be good. So Colt Sebastian Taylor. Get out of here. <laughs> he asks, well, he has two questions. Okay. Is Colt Sebastian Taylor the best Rizzler or the greatest Rizzler? <laughs> He's asking me a question about himself. How would <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. If he is then, he the best he rizzler or what? He has. What is, are you? Is he the best rizzler or the greatest rizzler? The greatest rizzler. The greatest. Nice. <laughs> He's a super entertainer. I like from the man show. I was like, this dude is going to make me laugh every time I watch his post. He is the greatest. Um, he is the greatest. So here's his follow up question. Uh huh. In the pandemic world. Apps like Rizzle have kept and created new connections with people around the world. Mm -hmm. Post-pandemic, do you think this trend will continue or will it level out in a way after the pandemic, no. pandemic uh, dies down? Yeah, it's definitely going to continue. Definitely. Like, the trend that the pandemic has set for us is connection, okay? Mm -hmm. And within connection, we have come to transform into really getting to know people without be, be having to physically see them, touch them, mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, I feel very connected to you guys, and we have yet to met physically, you know? And there are things that we have participated in and done together. You would think that we knew each other for, like, 10 years. Yep. You know? And that's not the case. So I do believe it's, it's going to continue, because a lot of people... Like me, I mean, I'm I'm well comfortable in my element at this present time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why take it away? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's the new normal now. Yeah. You know, it's been a year. In a way, it, it's crazy because in a way, though we're like a lot of us are no longer like physically seeing each other as much, but in a sense. We, see we found other. ways to remain close to each other in other in other means. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's we, really we cool. have cultivated real relationships regardless yeah. of the physicalities. Mm hmm. A hundred percent. Okay, you got one, two, three, four. You have seven questions from your favorite twins, the Twin Angels. Oh my God! Okay, let's, let's right. shoot them. Let's go. Here we go. Number one, what motivates you to work hard? Um, it, it stems from, you know, family. Like uh, my mom is just like that. My, my mom is basically an influencer on her own. You know, she's run her own organization, which is a nonprofit organization to help um people with uh, literacy. You know, helping immigrants how to read once they come to the states because you know a lot of the immigrants they some of them don't know how to read when they come to to this country and it's been in existence for 30 years now so my mom has been an influencer um she's been teaching and she's also worked hard regardless of the past that i explained to you you know she had to pretty much um readjust her life you know to because she had plans before, and those plans vanished once my father passed. And then it's like, okay, I'm trying to find myself. You know, yeah. what do I do now? And then as, um, by the time I was, I would say, somewhat in high school, then she started her own movement, you know, where she just went and she started to uh, teach people how to read and write, you know? And um, yeah. it, it, it lasted for 30 years, you know, and she's known for that. Her organization is well known, recognized for that. Um, 
Her program is is connected to two schools in the Board of Education in New York, you know, one in Brooklyn, one in Queens. Um, they've If it wasn't for the pandemic, they would have wanted her to emerge to other parts of, you know, the other regions and within other mm -hmm. counties. But physically, it's it's not possible, but they're still functioning online. You know, they're, they're, they're finding ways to make things work. Like if they really want something, they'll they'll create some type of lane for it to still happen. So absolutely. One second. I want to acknowledge Set Classen, who's on the live here tonight. Thank you, Set, for Steph, for um, being here. He actually is someone that I met on stereo. We connected on stereo. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I see okay. his little uh, stereo. Uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So he's on here. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, stereo is actually really fun. It's the bomb. I'm, um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to do a show. I want to do a show in there. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for y'all to get ready so we could do some some shows. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We're ready. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. Um, okay. Another one. What is your favorite thing about your career? Favorite thing about my career. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm in healthcare administration. Uh, basically, I deal with managed care contracts, okay? Managed care contracts means insurances, all right? Um, I know all the pros and cons when it comes to insurances. I know what you need, what you, what you should get in order to make things medically necessary to make sure that they pay for your services, okay? So with that being said, I've been in the field since uh, ooh, 1999. That was my first job in that, yeah. So I've been in the field since then. I learned a lot, many different hospitals that I work for. Now I'm in private sector, which I love, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and um, that field basically, it helps me connect with people with their issues, you know? It, it Because everybody, when you're in healthcare, no matter what your position is, everybody looks at you like you're their savior. Like, I have a condition, I need help, I don't have any money, I need this, you know, can you help me apply for this? Can you, you know, it's a lot of stuff. So it's like, that's where I learned pretty much to really connect with people from the very beginning and to understand that, you know, the value of people and have respect for people regardless of where they are in their lives. You know, um, you have people who work very hard to send their kids to school and everything and once they get sick, it's a major issue. You know, they have houses and all that stuff, but once they get sick, it's a major issue simply because they don't have insurance, you know? And then this is where I come in, where I'm like, well, we could put you on a program, you know? We could work this out, you know? You, you and then they, they feel so grateful, too, when you're able to help them with, with situations exactly. like that. You know, or there'll be situations where it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to have surgery, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, they said they're not going to cover it. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. so just bring me all your documentation from your doctor. Let me read through it, you know, and I'll see how we could work it out. You know what I mean? It's all right. about basically, um, you know, w with this field, I had I, I had to learn like medical terminology, pharmacology, reading medical records. Like I, I know how to read them, you know, everything that the doctor puts in, whether they write it or type it, like I can interpret it and all that stuff. So. I know everything on the medical level, you know? But at the same time, the thing about it, when it comes to the administration part with the medical field, when you know that part and you're on the different end, people think that you're, you're here to work with the doctors. Yes, I am, but at the same time, the people are my primary because they need to be mm -hmm. serviced. And I wanna make mm -hmm. sure that they don't go into debt after they get a procedure done, you know, because you know, easily they could put you in collections for medical yeah. services and not pay. Yeah, you know, it'll show up in your. They'll show up in your mailbox even if you move. They'll somehow find your address and and send you that mail to remind you, hey, you owe this money. Yeah. So with an advantage like that, like I'm the helper in my family, where they don't they don't worry about stuff like that. You know, they're not gonna be in debt. You know, because of that, I remember when I had my surgery, um, <laughs> I was so prepared for that to the point where 
I knew all the ins and outs because I was in the field. So mm -hmm. I was already prepared three months in advance with bills that were, that were paid up. So like three months in advance. So like I don't have an issue because I had a three month recovery time, you know, right. so that was taken care of. And I made sure that everything that they did, I mean, the surgery wasn't uh, pretty, it wasn't like small, it was big, okay? And it cost a lot. I didn't owe a cent, not one thing at all. Everything was paid 100% because I made sure that I had that. I told the doctor, this is what I need. This is what I need you to do. Make sure you write that it is medically necessary for me to have this surgery based mm -hmm. on my condition. And it's like, I, the doctor had an idea, but you know, doctors are special, they specialize in treating the patient. They don't necessarily specialize in the financial aspect of healthcare. Right. You know, so it doesn't matter. Like once they give you the service, that's it. Okay. They're not thinking about the back end. I'm no, they're not. They're like, I identify this problem. Them. Whatever the finances are, I, it has yeah. nothing to do with me. Yeah. I need to fix this and you work out the, the financial back end later. So my role comes in where I deal with those problems. And when I get to a point where, like, you know, you get good into your practice and then now I deal with it before it becomes a problem. Like I already tell people, okay, based on this, this is what you're going to need. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to write on. I'm going to propose this, that, whatever. Let me call the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Let me get a rep, blah, blah, blah. Boom, and that's it. Yeah. It's pretty simple, but you have to know what to do and how to do it. And that's what I learned in school. So I love it because right now the world is all about healthcare. You know, that's that's <laughs> something that's never going to not be in high demand. Let me tell you guys something, no. okay? I'm gonna tell you guys straight up from a healthcare perspective on the administrative side. Make sure you guys make your beds when it comes to healthcare finance, okay? Those stocks are out there that get invested, okay? Create accounts for you, your children, okay? When it comes to herbals, create your account, all right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's a little bit of money, put your money in. If you put $100 today and you say that I don't have $100 anymore, I'm gonna have it next month, next month, you make sure you put another hundred dollars, okay? Because mm -hmm. we're talking about long-term passive income, okay? Yeah. You may not see it happening now, but like I said, you guys know the companies you see in the news that are making moves, okay? You well, as of you lately, as of lately, a lot of people have been shifting to um, a lot of holistic approaches and a lot, a lot of more, more on the natural side when it comes to ingredients and, and approaches? All of them. Cannabis, okay? All right? When you watch the news, trust me, one of the reasons why I watch the news is to make sure I'm in tune with the trends. Because when you watch the news, then you inform, you know what's going on, you know how to move. Financially, yes. Cryptocurrency, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Now, don't make a mistake for you. You know, the vaccine is out there. You're you going to tell me you're not going to invest in the vaccine? Like, are you mad? You know, mm -hmm. they're about to move to retail stores where you could go to your drugstore. You're not going to put your money in that? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's crazy because a lot of people are not going to are not going to get the vaccine for some reason, but they will invest. Yeah. They will invest because you, they know a whole bunch of people will take get it. it. Like I tell people, I don't eat junk food, but I'm invested. Because mm -hmm. you know other people that will. Okay. There's a whole bunch of even though you don't eat junk food, there's a whole lot of people out there that will. But that's the thing. Conceptually, we have to change our mindset. You know? Yeah. Even if you don't eat it all the time, once in a while, okay, fine. But you indulge every now and then. Yeah, because when you look at it, at the end of the day, it is so simple. You know, you don't need a million dollars. You don't need a thousand dollars. You can start with a measly twenty dollars and just keep adding it, keep adding it. You got a hundred dollars, good. You mm -hmm. got fifty, good. You got thirty. It's also good. a patience game, too. Exactly. It's also a patience game, yep. You know, 
Cause and people, then some people, people are like, oh my God, you know, I put it in there, but I see it going down. Leave it. It's going to go back it, up. Yeah. When it goes down, it's going to come back up. <laughs> but that's, that's where the patience comes in. People people see it going down and they're like, oh, you know what? Let me take my money back. I don't want to lose more money. No, just yeah. hang tight <laughs> because it'll be, it'll be that very moment that you take the money out that all of a sudden it skyrockets and they're like, dang, I should have left it in there. Yeah, like people are, the things that people focus on nowadays, I just be like, yo, why don't you do some reading? It's so simple. Like I, mm -hmm. when I wake up in the morning, I can't wait. I, I look at my phone and I'm like, okay, what's going on? Yeah, like, oh, okay, you need some reading. Okay, great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. What is your proudest accomplishment and who is your favorite author? My proudest accomplishment was when I finally got a point to have my surgery. You know, because for a long time I was knocking on doors, knocking on doors, and I always heard the word no all the time. I mean, I've been knocking on doors since I was 19 years old, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, oh, it was always no, you can't, you can't. And like they say, you got to try something different to get a different result. Well, I started to analyze. And so I started to analyze at one point and I was saying, let me write down exactly what is it that I'm doing and to from what, once I get the clarity as to what I'm doing, then I'm going to see exactly what is it that I need to change. And that's exactly what I did. I remember I kept going to women doctors. Mm -hmm. Every doctor. OBGYN, women, women, women. And I said, oh, okay. It kept saying no to me. Just get a hysterectomy. It's not going to get better. Don't worry about it. Or just leave it alone. You know, if you leave. And you know what? Half the time, half the time when when surgeons or doctors say no to something, it's because they feel that their reputation as a doctor or a surgeon is on the line if they can't absolutely for sure accomplish whatever it is they need to accomplish in that surgery. If they, yep. if they if they know they can't if they can't picture themselves going into the surgery and actually being successful at it because they don't want to screw up their reputation they go oh it's not possible no yep. it, it is possible you just can't do it. I'll find somebody that will absolutely so I went through a whole entire list like I would put my 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 hands and my feet up Okay, and I would still have more space in terms of the amount of doctors that I saw, all different women. You know? And I was saying to myself, like, why don't I just go see a, a man OBGYN? Like, well, why not? You know? And mm -hmm. I remember I, I went to one, he was like, oh, I don't really know, blah, blah, blah. Um, it, I think it is doable, but this and that. I was just like, okay, no problem. Thank you for your services. And then, I went to another one, and at that time, I was, like, really ill, like, to a point where, you know, I I felt, like, I have a heart murmur, and I felt the the gripping of the murmur when it was actually happening. That's how weak I was. And I remember yeah. I went to him, and I, I sat down, and I said to him, this is my situation, you know, I really need to help. And I said, you know, um, I feel like my days are limited at this point. Because right. I'm going for the It's a scary feeling too. Yeah. Because you don't know. Yeah. So when he <clears> checked <throat> me out and everything, he was just like, first of all, who the heck you've been seeing? Like who who is this who are these doctors you've been seeing? Because this could have been fixed a long time ago. And I'm like, oh, what? Like, what? Go yeah. on. So he said, basically, listen, follow everything that I tell you to the T. We're gonna prepare you. I will do this. It's not going to be easy, but it's doable. And we're going to get it done. And that was it. That's all you needed to hear. That was it. And then while I was in recovery, I started writing my book. Faces of mm -hmm. you in, in my on recovery bed, I was making contacts. Hey, you want to be part of my, a part of the story? It's going to be an anthology, you know, for women's health. So, People were like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I didn't think wow. anything of it. The following year, boom, award-winning author. Following year after that, boom, award-winning author. I was just like, whoa. 
Okay. Like, where did this come from? And the only reason why I wanted to write the book was not because of the clout. It was just me giving gratitude to God and thanking, putting the information out there for other people who need it and thanking God for my accomplishment. Like, we we got this. We, we, we made yeah. it happen. Because truthfully, mm-hmm. I didn't think that I would have even made it to today. Well, see, that, that's the beautiful thing about it because you have a lot of people out there that may have felt the same way you did you know, in a sense of, Dang, like all these people are saying no to me. Like, I, I can't, there's no way I can get this, this worked on. Like, I'm just gonna, just gonna wither and die and that'll be it. Yeah. And for, you to, and for you to show them there is another way, it, it, it provides hope. And, and you're, you're basically breathing life into people that read the book. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, I had people who have come to me. Would be like, you know what? Like they were so emotional and just said, you know what? There's part of me that's upset and there's part of me that's happy. You know, I'm happy that you're able to share the story to give us hope, mm-hmm. courage, and inspiration. But then I'm also upset at the fact that I lost my chance. Right. You know? And I totally understand that and I sympathize with people with that. And that's why like I'm very humble about the whole situation because, you know, I'm in a position where I could have lost my chances, but I was steadfast into like, no, not me. It's not going to happen. And I mm-hmm. made sure it didn't happen because it didn't have to happen. Why? You know? So uh, some other women do not understand that, you know, you always have options. Whatever a, a doctor tells you just because they're the doctor doesn't necessarily mean that's your doctor. Like, that's, yeah, that's not the all and be all. Yeah. You know? Because this is when I started doing education forums with people. I'm like, listen, when you go to the doctor, and this is where my healthcare skills comes in too, you know, because people would ask me, like, I'm in healthcare administration, so I'm going to speak to you in a way where I'm going to deliver it in layman's term so that you can understand, but I'm also going to give you the medical administration perspective of it. Now, when you go to the doctor, by all means, you're only going for an opinion. They're only giving you an opinion. If you stay within those parameters in your brain to know it's just an opinion, you know it's not a last word for you, which mm-hmm. means you could possibly go get another opinion somewhere else that's going to be more favorable to you right here. Yeah. So, And I think that's the that, problem because a lot of people take that opinion and they go, oh, well, a doctor said it, so it's facts. I'm done. I'm, I'm at a dead end. <laughs> so it's not always the case. Exactly. So th- th- that's how that whole thing came about. But like I said, I was just like, oh, no, nah, not me, man. We ain't doing this. <laughs> now, now, as a, now, as an author, mm-hmm. what what authors do does Martine admire? Which authors I admire? Okay, so definitely, I admire authors who create their own movements. Um, a lot of them happen to be. Uh, African-American authors, not that I'm biased or anything, but they're the ones who have created a lot of different movements. Like it's a lot of social um, uh, social issues that they discuss. Like you have Toni Morrison, you have Ang- um, Angela, what's her name again? Angela Rye? No. Um, no. What's her, oh my God. She died. A very, why is her name not coming? But I'll come back to her. Yeah, Toni Morrison is one that I love dearly. Although I, I, um, I read a lot in terms of finance and all that other stuff. But when it comes to like literature in terms of poetry, um, what's that? Yeah, the young lady came out. Um, in the inauguration, and they said that she resembled her. Oh, man. I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but I can't get the name. She died a while ago. Uh, yeah. I, her name? Oh, man. Maya Angelou. There you go. There we go. Maya Angelou. Still I rise. Yeah. Still I rise. Maya Angelou was, like, for a long time, the one of the only authors that I was crazy for. Like, if I saw her on an interview, I remember she interviewed on Oprah many, many times. 
you know, and if she had like an article in a magazine or whatever, like I was so like I would cut out the magazine and take her part and just save it. Everything about her, save it. Like I was so crazy about her, you know, till this day. I mean, she's not here anymore, whatever. But I remember when she passed, like I feel like it was like one of my aunts who passed, you know? Yeah, it did. It did feel that way. It, it, it felt like, like she was that aunt that kind of like, spoke some sense into you yeah yeah you know and it was always whenever i read her pieces or i heard her speak it was always a wake-up call for me always a wake-up call so authors like that yeah for sure um i'm into that um the twins would also like to know (laughs) where do you see yourself five years from now and how do you manage your time uh Five years from now, that's that's really funny though, because you know people think five years from now is like far, it's around the corner. It's really okay. not, yeah, yeah. So basically, based on what I've been working on, um, one thing I wanted to announce to you guys is that there is a blog coming out, you know, under author Martin Maya's handle. Um, it's already in the works where I will have my YouTube, like it's like a hub where I have my YouTube and everything, the show, you know, newsletters and all that connected to it, everything that I do connected to it. So even my books will already listed on there. So people will tap on them directly. That's already something that's already in the works yet to be publicly published um, Mm -hmm. very soon. You know, Uh, the Martine show has also made its way to become a podcast, which is also fruition. So uh, a lot of you guys interviews, um, they're already making their way out to uh, they're on Anchor, they're making their way out on Google Podcasts, uh, Overcast, and Radio Public, and Google po- you know, co- Podcasts, all that um, and stuff. So that's where we're leading towards. We're still going to keep it visual in terms of Instagram, but they reappear again. So let's say we have Tuesdays and Thursdays for here, you know, Mm -hmm. Instagram every Wednesday after that, there is a show that appears, not necessarily the same show because it's backlog, Mm -hmm. you know, but the Martine show is constantly playing. So if you go on anchor, you look for the Martine show, you'll find it, you know, Mm -hmm. right. So that's why I'm at with that. Um, Becoming a full-fledged social social influencer where I, I get paid for my creations, which is also already in the works with what I just discussed and plus more, you know. And the teacher, social media teacher. Oh, that too. That is also in the works as well. Um, mm-hmm. I know you guys are looking from, from me to come out with courses, which we're actually working on that too. Um, and stuff and and keep on assisting you know so yeah so look out for the blog look out for courses coming at you um a newsletter is actually going to be coming at you guys as well for those of you who have been okay. interviewed with me and scheduled through the electronic scheduler since mm-hmm. i do have emails very soon you guys will get some updates so in your emails you guys will get a newsletter mm-hmm. You know, letting you know what's next with me, what's upcoming. So none of you guys will pre- pretty much be disconnected, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but still we'll always be in the loop. Always be in the loop. <laughs> so that's that's where we're living. Mm-hmm. It's still really be- smart. <laughs> it's really smart how you're repurposing a lot of your content, though. Because oh, yeah. when when you have these interviews on Instagram, mm-hmm. you have a particular audience. But then when you package them up and you, and you deliver it someplace else, somebody may listen to an interview you did maybe a year ago and it may hit them a certain way that may have not have heard it if they didn't get it through the podcast format. You know? Exactly. So I think it's really smart um, to do that. I appreciate that, though. And that is something that I learned from... Um, Actually, following Gary V, you guys go yeah, know Gary. V. I really do. I love Gary that v, dude. Gary V tells you basically, content is king. Okay, once you have 
the constant flow of content. You could take that one piece of content and turn it into an infinity of different versions. Okay, it yeah. will never stop. All right, and that's how you think he appears all over the place all the time. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. He's not always making new content. He's making new content. Like I have here Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's a schedule. You know what I mean? So we come on Instagram with something new. But that same content from the time that I started up in August, okay, I could publish them somewhere else. I can cut them up. I can create shorter videos, give snippets somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? And that's something yeah. that, you know, I could create a blog with the video in there, you know, which is something that I have going on now. You know what I mean? Storylines, you know? And in, in, within the storylines, I could create some sort of advertisement, you know, where a lot of you guys are involved, those of you who have businesses and all that stuff. Yeah, why not? You guys get highlighted. And it's constant, constant. And then you have, um, because you have constant um, content, then if you have a blog and you could pretty much like get affiliate marketing programs, you know, you could sign up for mm -hmm. those you know, that puts money into your pocket. You know what I mean? Right. And it just keeps going on and on again. So. And final question from this minute. Oh, aside wow. from necessities, aside from necessities, what's one thing you cannot go one day without? The water. Right. The water. Right. It's yeah, yep. like I, I drink water daily, many different times in the day. It's oxygen. It 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 basically helps me think better, clear, um, hydrates me. Um, you know, calms me down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just it's it's universal. Pick up a glass of water, whether it's hot or cold. Because sometimes I drink hot water. You know. And that's for cleansing. For your yeah, mm -hmm. that's for cleansing. But then um, sometimes I, I'm too hot, so I need a cooler drink, cold water, you know, stuff like that, or lukewarm water. But water, yeah. can't do without water. Believe it or not, um, there was a time where I was always drinking, like, juice. I've already made up in my mind that I'm going to stop drinking Coke or, or any type of soda because I've realized that every time I do, I start to break out. So that's one obstacle I've conquered. But then I started getting into the habit of, oh, I'm going to drink juice all the time. And that I, I found that that wasn't always good. As of lately, I found myself drinking more water and more green tea. Awesome. That's what I do. So, <laughs> Yeah, it, it helps and every now lot. and then I'll treat myself to some lemonade too. So. Yeah, it helps a lot. So like about that soda, you know, just contribute every week ten dollars to the stock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of buying the soda and consuming it, spend yeah. it in the in the, uh, the stocks just, and, just and, and benefit from it. Yeah, exactly. that's what we direct everything. That's all. All right. We have Jacob. Laguerre. Whoa, Jacob. How, yeah, I haven't heard from him in a hot minute. How did you find out about Rizzo? Okay. Um, I found out about Rizzo. I was following a young lady named V. Mademoiselle on YouTube. And she mentioned Rizzo on one of her videos. And um she mentioned that it was kind of like a small YouTube video content creation type app and you could get monetized and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh. And at the time, I was really into her, you know? So I was like, wow. All right. Let me see. And then she came up one another day. She was like, oh, I'm on the app, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my God, she's on the app. I'm going to get on the app too, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's how I joined. And I remember I joined and I followed her and I saw what she was doing on there. Um, she can stay long and everything, but um, that's how I got a Rizzle. And once I got a Rizzle, it was like, okay, I did the first video. The first video, I thanked her for sharing it in her video on YouTube. And then I was like, oh, my God, I have 29 videos to go. 
to monetize. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let me just do this. And I did. And then next Powerful. thing you know, it was like, continue, 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 and that's it. Nice. All right, I'm going to get into some really good ones now. This is from our buddy, our good old friend, Jossam Khan. Oh, boy. Number one, do you prefer to live in an urban setting or a rural setting? Mind you, you cannot choose one or another, and you can't say suburbs. That's what he, that's, that's what he said. Uh, urban or rural? Well, I think where where I am is more rural setting, the way that it is. Mm -hmm. um, my where I live is very detached and very private zone um, type, and um, I'm on the borderline. If you know New York, I'm on the borderline of. Uh, Queens and Long Island. I'm like right at the tip. So within okay. within less than five minutes, I could be on the other side and then be in Long Island. You know. Okay. And um, I'm familiar. I have a I have an aunt that actually stays out uh, in the Long Island area. Yeah. So very calm, very collected, very secluded, pretty much. Um, the other. Size would be more like uh, urban into suburban areas are more closed up and very uh, more chaotic because they're overpopulated per se. You know, okay. where I am, there's less less um, population and it is more private housing. Yeah, so okay, much, that's, that's the way. But that I guess that's I'm used to that setting, so I like pretty much do that. Okay. He also wants to know what is your favorite book genre to read? Book genres. Um, I love uh, books that are related to healing, so that'll be self self help, self development books. Yeah. Nice. Those two. Okay. Oh, this one's hilarious. Shamoon. Oh, my God. What do you think of him? <laughs> that's it. That's his, that's his question. What do you think of Shamoon? Shamoon, I think he is uh, super brilliant. You know, I love his accent. Okay. Um, yo, I he, when I close my eyes and hear his voice, I'm like, yo, this is this is Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. This is Chris Hemsworth. He's it's Thor. Beautiful. And I love the way he connects with everyone. And he's just like that type of guy. He's just like very cool and relaxed. And um, I enjoyed listening to you, your guy's show on stereo. It's just his, his voice is very calming. It's very nice to hear him out. You know, you just want to listen to him type of thing. You know, right, I like that about him. Yeah, we 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 connected on a Marvel level because we love we love our Marvel franchises. So we have extensive conversations on all things that are Marvel. Um, yeah. uh, let's okay. So I have I have a personal question with you because it's ba it's kind of based on what I went through today at the gig that I was at. Wow. Um, what was what would you say is your personal biggest L and how did you bounce back from it? So my personal biggest lowdown uh, mm -hmm. and bounce back from it. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. So we could say like this, um, more or less like recently when it comes to the show, um, if I had invited somebody and they stated that they're going to be on the show on that day, like their schedule, and then they don't show up, you know, that, that's a, that's an L right there, you know? And the way I bounce back from it is just basically like this. Like I have to look in terms of what do I deliver 
within my product, which is the show, you know? Right. And the thing about it is this. The show, like I said, self-love journey is about self-awareness, self-development, and everything social coming from the interviewee. Now, if somebody schedules themselves and says that they're going to be there, they gave me their word to say they're going to be there, okay? And I accept that word in honor of them. And then all of a sudden, they just no show. Then that means that personally, something is not right within themselves. They're not ready. You know what I'm saying? So I had to take that in terms of it's not me, the issue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I offer the opportunity to everyone. It's a matter of what you want to do with it. You know? Right. So <clears throat> that on that note, the way that I took it, it's like, well, okay, but as the show must go on. You know, it's not it's about the people, but I cannot allow the people to take over my show. You get what I'm saying? For those mm-hmm. who need this show and it's beneficial to them, the show must go on. So I just keep it moving like that. Right. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Because it's useful mm-hmm. to people, but you have to designate who is useful to because I'm not for everybody, and my show is not going to be for everybody. Just like you're not for everybody, and Oprah's not for everybody, Wendy Williams is not for everybody. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And that's what it is. So at the end of the day, whatever it is that you went through today that puts you in some type of disarray, it's like you got to look at yourself in terms of like, is, was it really me? Or was mm-hmm. it really on the other party? You know, because mm-hmm. one thing you need to understand is just like a relationship, okay? You'll be going through something. It's easy for the other person to make you feel bad because they want to point the finger at you. But it's like, okay, what's going on over there with you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that we don't have our own things going on, but seriously, <laughs> what is going on over there? What's going on over there with you? Right. That you you you're not showing because when people think that they make an appointment and they're like oh I'm gonna be on the show and then they don't show up you're not sh- you're it's not that you're not showing up for me you're not showing up for yourself because the show is about you okay you could have learned something or picked up some type of insight to help you move forward in your life but you didn't show up because the people are waiting for you I'm just a facilitator and when I tell people that it's really true you know. I keep it flowing, but we all get transformed. Yeah. Yeah. You got to look at things like that. With each interview, both parties walk away with something that they didn't have going into the interview. Absolutely. Uh, I can definitely say that. The way you come in is not the way you leave. Never. Exactly. Exactly. And I know it's a fact. I know it's a fact because some of you guys would be like, you know what? I need to come back. I'm ready because last time I was there, you know, X, Y, Z happened and blah, blah, blah. But this time I know exactly because I've been doing my work. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this, blah, blah, blah. And you ready for show. Yeah. And I got I to gotta give you an update on what a lot of people just want to give you updates on where they are because they remember <laughs> where they were when they first got interviewed. And it's exciting to be like, oh, I got I have an update to give on the show. I can't wait to show people how much to show how, how much I've grown from when I was last on the show to now. Exactly. And that's where self awareness, self development, and everything social. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, cause because I know I have this uh and you obviously know this. I have okay, I have multiple issues. I have this one issue where I overanalyze because I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I'm a pseudo perfectionist when it comes to certain things where like, if I have in my, in my mind, I want something to look or sound or feel a certain way. And if it's slightly off in any way, I am losing my mind over it. And then furthermore, when I feel like I, I didn't do well at something, I'm 
extra hard on myself. Extra hard on myself. You know, um, especially tonight, man. Like, like when I tell you, I did not sleep the entire night. I stayed up. I did not sleep. I got home from work, straight from work. I got showered. I ate. I literally took out all of my equipment, knowing that th this event was coming up, and I tested every possible scenario I could think of that could happen at the event just so I could make sure, okay, if this happens, I'll do this, and then I'll do that, and then this will work, and then that will work. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I tested every single possible scenario I could think of. There was absolutely no way anything can go wrong tonight. So me, Bars, Danger Felix, we go out there, we set up. And for the first 10 minutes, everything was smooth sailing. And then all of a sudden, we start getting glitches and... Uh, Wi-Fi connection issues and sound issues and then one device's video goes out and then that one comes back on and the other device, the video goes out and then it comes back on and one thing I can say is we all learned how to improvise on the spot. If this happened, then we think really fast on our feet and we fix the problem by doing X, Y, Z. And it, it, it could have been a whole lot worse. Um, you know, um, and bars and, 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 and danger, you know, I, I, I love them so much because it was like they were, they were being very optimistic about the situation. They were like, look, it's just a hiccup. We're going to bounce back from it. But I kid you not, man, all I could think about in the back of my mind was, yo, screwed up. What are you going to do now? Like, I, that's, it's a bad habit that I have. And I'm trying to figure out how I can stop doing that. All right. So from a coaching perspective, I listened to everything that you said to me. And mm -hmm. one thing that I heard is that you said that you went through your mind before the event, the night before, before the event, you went through mm -hmm. your head at every single possible scenario that could possibly occur. So what you did at that moment in time that night is that you put yourself in creation mode for every possible disaster that may come your way for that day. That's number right. one. And when it did happen, what you needed to understand is that you positioned yourself for it to happen because at the end of the day, what you and Boss did was fix it. So. Yeah. Where it's not that where you went wrong, but the issue is that you pretty much called it upon yourself to be in a position to be fixing something and to say that, but well, we still got it done regardless. X Y. Yeah. So all that is, all that is control. You're controlling the situation. It's with, almost like a jinxed it. Exactly. Exactly so. So which means that had you possibly not gone through all of the possible scenarios that could possibly occur, maybe today would have set out to be a different day. Yeah. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? The law of attraction. Again, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because all of, because I, I guess like, with that particular attitude, I feel like maybe indirectly I attracted the negativity and that's why things didn't go the way. But the thing about it, all of that was through fear. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. And what is fear is false, false evidence. evidence of fear. Fear. It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. So you created your own setup your own illusion as to like you, you you set up your own movie and then it happened before your face today and at the end you ended up being the hero of the movie your own superhero where 
you and Boris fixed it. You see, the thing with you, GQ, you are a superhero. Whether you create it in a movie, series, whatever, you see yourself as a superhero. And at the end of the day, you always want to be a superhero. So you create your own situations so that you are in control. And the end point is that I fixed it. Yeah. Because I never want to be in a situation where I'm in a situation, I'm, I'm in a position where I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And then I freeze. I, I yeah. never want to be in that position. Exactly. Listen to what your words. I never want to be in that situation, which means you are not open and allowing yourself to have any other space in between for anything to be diverted or for any other transformation to happen. It has to go your way. Like within these lines, it has to go that way. If it doesn't go that way, then it's not good. Yeah. You know? So it's like, you have to learn to pretty much let go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what happened. You know, but at the end of the day, you ended up being a superhero though. Yeah. I mean, but, but you know what? I, I couldn't, I could, I could not do it without danger Felix and, and bars. Uh, keeping me feeling encouraged because they, they saw, they, they, they looked at me and they knew that I was fuming, but they know that I'm one of those people where if I'm in front of others, I don't want to show it. I don't want to show that I'm flustered, but they know that, <laughs> oh man, G, G's upset, but he trying to, he trying to like front, like, like everything good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and you got no, that happening. You got that inner voice happening. That's like, damn, I can't believe this actually happened. Like, I thought about this and it'll go a lot. Yeah. 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 That's why I, I got to I gotta allow, I gotta allow room for error because I feel like I could probably it's, learn better from screwing up sometimes. It's, it's, it's not even room for error. Like, listen to yourself. Like, when you, you want to call something upon you, it's going to be like, you know what, I'm just going to chill and be open. You know, just be open because you know what? Either way, whether it's good or bad, it's going to land. Yeah. Let it land. And when it lands, you deal with it, but don't call it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't control every step of the way. And that's, that's something that I had to learn too. You know, I had to relinquish that for myself. You know, that's right. something that I really had to work on. That's, that's part of a big part of my healing process is relinquish like responsibility like being an only child and and seeing my mom go through what she went through and having to be strong and all that stuff i ended up with a lot of responsibilities and i end up having to be very accountable because yeah. it's either me or no way you get what i'm saying so mm -hmm. with that being said i was very much in control of a lot of things now coming into relationships i didn't know the difference i'm coming mm -hmm. from a woman who basically had a set thing like you, it has to mm -hmm. go this way. And all of a sudden, boom, husband dies, left with a child, got a raise, single mom, we're helping with family. And then she's being strong every day, regardless of whatever the situation is. I became that way. So in relationships at that moment in time, I started clashing with the people that I was with because I was always in control. You know, I got this. No, it can't happen that way. You have to allow that person the space to be. And yeah. that's something that I had to learn. Okay. So all of that is all controlling. It's like, I would sit down too, you know, like I'm going to go do something and I would just figure all the ins and outs of it. And at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's a disaster. But then it took me a while to realize I called the disaster upon myself. Yeah. You know, I called the disaster upon myself. You know what I mean? And then I so got to stop being part of myself, to too. Go, once I started yeah. to learn how to let go, you know, then I started even feeling lighter on my shoulders. Okay? I, I started detaching myself and feeling like I don't need 
to be in control of everything. I don't need to know what the next step is. I don't need to know exactly, you know, what he's going to say or what he's going to do. He's going to get me something. I don't need to tell him where to go to go get it. I don't need to tell him what to get me. I don't need to tell him how to surprise me. You get what I'm saying? Let him be. And that's it. So it's all of that stuff. Yeah. It's all of that stuff. And that's exactly, you know, Mm -hmm. what you went through today. So you just got to learn to let go. I got to learn to let go. And I got to learn to not beat myself up. Yeah, because that's a bad habit. That you got a gig. You got a gig. You and the guys be like, "All right, we got a gig tomorrow." Blah blah blah. You know, let's get together. We're gonna pray on it, and it's gonna be a very good gig. And that's it. And we're just gonna do our best because that's all that yeah. we do anyway. This is how to be. Exactly. Yeah. And whatever comes up, you deal with it. But you didn't call it. You know that it's just like that's just what happened. Hmm. You know, but you're not going to sit down and revise and analyze and then strategize. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, yeah, oh, like I, I, never, I don't feel like I was unprepared, you know, because my, my, my father, like, this is one thing I need to understand Like I needed to understand from a, a long time ago, like, you know, we go to school and you're like, oh, you know, you got to do homework, you got to study, you got to do this. Okay. That's for school. But when it comes for life, mm-hmm. you can't pinpoint everything. Yeah. Because after a while, you become irritable to people. You can't pinpoint everything. Yeah, that's what it is. You become irritable, okay? And the people who are closest to you, they they will want to feel like they need a detachment. Like they need to run or like just be alone from you for a bit because you become so irritable because everything is like, it has to go on a straight line. It has to go within these parameters right here. If it's not like, if, if it happens to jump over the fence, Oh no, it's not good. That's not happening. That it can't happen that way. Uh, uh-uh, That's not the way I predicted it to be, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, um, yo, some, some, some of your friends, the people who are closest to you, sometimes they might be like, yo, bro, chill out. What's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's because you very stern and rigid in the way that you want things to go. It can't be that way. Because yeah. you're going to end up suffering at the end of the day. You're going to be depleted. And you're going to be like, it's still thinking about other strategies as to what you should have, could have done. So you didn't do. Maybe yeah. you could it out, be better. You know what's crazy is... <sighs> That was one of the things that was stopping me from putting out content on YouTube because I was like, oh, well then, but if I put this out, what if the reaction is this? And, but then as of lately, it wasn't, it wasn't until recently that I just started to just be like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to stick to it. And regardless of how it turns out, I'm just going to let it be. I'm going to do my, my, my Marvel WandaVision reviews every week. I'm going to do my Professor of Common Sense every week. And then I'll do my little funny post on Instagram. And then I'll just see where it goes. If my goal is to, if I could make one person laugh or one person think, or one person at the very least forget about whatever problem they're going through that day with whatever I put out, I'm good. Well, Doesn't matter if the video is not edited correctly or if there's a little glitch in one part of the video or my graphic doesn't turn out right. If I could make somebody feel good that for, for those few minutes of watching that video, it's fine. Exactly. But the thing about it, you keep saying, well, what if maybe if it what if no, You're killing me li- li- listen to listen to this it's just like me you know on the blog i'm going to plan to do book reviews as an author okay and a book review is going to be my book review it's going to be on based on my personal assessment of what i read in the book there's no right or wrong to it it's my personal opinion it's my personal view same thing with mm. you you're doing your revisions one division thing your videos it's based on what your perception is. Who the hell cares whether somebody is touched, moved, or inspired, or whatever? That's your personal opinion. 
The only thing you mm-hmm. need to know is have a, a tag that's going to attract people and have the appropriate tag for that damn video. And then you just mm-hmm. drop it. And that's it. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's your view anyway. It's the same way. You get on stereo, you're like, oh, we're going to do a show. Me and Dwayne, we're going to do a show together. We're going to talk about WandaVision. Don't wait for people to be like, what is the show about? Don't just mm-hmm. leave it open talk. Because when you leave it open talk, anybody could come and be like, turn the direction all around. Just be like, yo, yeah. WandaVision, and you put your title, boom, this is what we're talking about today. And you put your mm-hmm. hashtag if you want, boom, this is the topic for today. Everybody's going to come and they're going to be within those par- parameters. Every question, yeah. every recording that comes through, they're going to respect it and be like, this is what we're doing. You driving that shit. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. On my YouTube, I have some videos that have gone crazy. I have some videos that have like three views on there. I have some mm-hmm. videos that have I have one that you guys know I have one that has sixty eight thousand you know <laughs> views on there one that has four thousand views one two thousand views one ten views one twenty seven views one three <clears throat> views but it's yeah. moving you know I'm at five hundred and twelve subscribers mm-hmm. it's moving yeah. yeah we shouldn't we shouldn't not do something just because we see other people doing it. We should just do whatever we enjoy. Exactly. Regardless of if somebody else is doing the same thing. Because nobody does it like you, you know? Exactly. Exactly. You enjoy Marvel. You enjoy WandaVision. You enjoy being a superhero, watching superheroes. Just be like, yo, this is the topic for today. This is what we're doing. Boom. That's it. Whoever likes it, likes it. Whoever doesn't, oh well. You know, videos drop, go check it out. Boom, boom, boom. Leave your comments. Like, comment, and share. Yeah. It's done. You, you, by the time they go like, comment, and share, you're ready at the next video. Yeah. That's it. That's true. Oh, thank That's you. True. You know? Ah, uh, Shiro, Martin, you, Martin, you are my Shiro. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, if you sit down, you're going to think about all these strategies, all these things, all that. You're never going to get anything done. I'm mm-hmm. never going to. That's See, that's what stopped me. That's what took me so long to release that album that I finally dropped in March. Because I was like, ah, oh, that vocal didn't <laughs> sound right. I'm going to re-record it. Like, if they don't like it, they can kick rocks. Exactly. Because think about it. The people who come to your channel, they come to your channel, either they like you or they like your content. That's all it is. They're not going to mm-hmm. come to your channel. And there are people who constantly watch your channel who are not even going to subscribe to you, but they'll constantly watch you. Let it be. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Just keep putting your stuff out there. And just make sure you got all the technicalities put together by all means, but you just keep putting your stuff out there. And that's yeah. it. And moral of the story, um, don't feel like it's absolutely necessary to be in control of stuff. Just nah. let stuff happen. Nah. Because I would go crazy. I'll go crazy and nothing will get done because I'm sitting here overthinking that one little thing. By the, by the time I, I finish and finally make a decision of doing something over something I'm overanalyzing, I could have done 10, 20 times over already. Exactly. Exactly. So, it is a process. Big Gene is in the building. If yes. They don't like it, they can kick rocks. yes. Yes. That is right. Isaac JB eleven. <laughs> Go. <laughs> so, we have any other questions? Um, that was that. Those are the questions that I got um from everybody. That's uh, awesome. And and you short notice, that was quite mm-hmm. a bit. What you said? I said, considering that it was short notice that I asked for everybody's questions, it's quite a bit. It was quite a bit. They did pretty well. They did pretty well. Did. I, I like that. that. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See, so people are cool. curious. Yeah. And of oh, course, goodness. I would like to thank you for giving me that opportunity to be the interviewer. So that everybody can get a, get a peek into you and who you are outside of being the person that asks the questions. So one thing I got to say about, about you, and I, I, want, I wanted to, I, like, I, I thought deeply about this, like you interviewing me, 
um, for me, this this is you. This is this is iconic for you to actually interview me. And um, I actually want you uh, to. I'm going to give you this so that you can utilize it on your entertainment channel, so that you okay. can advertise you interviewing me. You know, on your set because it's important. Okay. Um, and um, it's 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 a special time for me because. You have a lot going on with you. I, I like what you do. I believe in you, and I've seen your progress, and I love your commitment, you know? And like I said, it's Black History Month, guys. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We've been dropping a whole lot of gems, okay, today. Like, every every day, basically, in terms of when we have the show, we've been dropping a whole lot of gems with a lot of great representation. And... I feel like I gave back to you today, you know, like you've poured into me, you've been on my show twice, you know, we've connected on other levels, we've helped each other out, but I gave back to you today. And and that, that is huge for me. And I, and I feel very good about that. So I'm by grateful. All means, I'm very grateful. You're welcome. By all means, I know that I'm going to give you this video as well. And I know you're going to use it well, Mr. Animation, Mr. Video Editor and everything else. <laughs> And you just do your thing and put it out there, you know. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You're and welcome. thank everybody else for giving me those questions because those were some really, really deep <laughs> they were questions. Bomb questions. They yeah. were questions. Like you guys are really interested in me in my life. Like seriously. <laughs> yeah, they they were digging in. They were digging in. So so you got support all over the place. So that's awesome. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Oh, you're not invisible. Oh, Mr. Mickey. Everybody had really nice comments. Oh, Dwayne wants to know when is my next book. Um, I have a lot of writing pieces, but I have not thought when to publish it yet. I mean, I already have like six um, books out in terms of me being a contributor and also me creating my own, you know, but, um, I have not thought about publishing in terms of the book. I'm working more on the blog, which is another publishing piece. Um, that's the main version of everything because it's going to have all of my work up there. Um, and then some. But we'll look to see. I have some stuff that I'm not ready to publish yet because the deeper I go into my life, the more deeper my writing becomes. You know? So, like, I'm a little iffy about it. But I'll definitely let you guys know. You found me on Clapper? Okay. You keep on Clapper. Awesome. Follow me as well. It's the same. Author Martin Myers. <laughs> so I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta follow him back. If you found me. Yo, Clapper has been... Clapper has been... Um, Clapper has been, like, developing fast. Yes. Like... They got the radio and, and it's really, you know what's crazy? Clapper, because you know, Clapper has three minutes. Apparently, from what I'm understanding, TikTok is about to get three minutes as well. But Clapper got there first, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. I don't know, man. Minutes, there's a lot that you can say in three minutes. It's, yeah. It's, it's good enough. And now they have the live feature. But you they have the live see. feature and they have the radio feature too, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how the radio feature works yet, but I went live actually with Mr. G the other day. That was cool, you know. Um, but you can't save the live. That's the only thing. Oh, they don't have okay. It. Yeah, but do they allow? Do, do they allow you to screen record? The what? Do they allow you to to screen record? Um, uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, My yeah, I'm not sure. But it, it allows you to connect with the followers, you know. Okay. Because you pop up and you get to connect with them and, and talk to them and they respond back. So it, it's cool. That's pretty cool. Even though you can't save, but it, it, it's it's probably good to do it in the pop up version. Like, hey, what's, up, guys? what's going on? How are you guys doing? Let me know what you're feeling. Let's talk. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm very much into stereo. Like now, honestly, I have so many followers on stereo. 
the only thing I did was participate in terms of like, um, you know, answering in terms of like leaving my recording, you know, on, yeah, on the show. And that's it. And people started following me like, oh, my God, I like what you said. And I'm like, oh, OK. So eventually what I want to do is that I want to start a program there. So we could talk about some really good hot topics. Um, if you're gonna, whoever's interested, by all means, like I'm willing to do a show with each and every one of you guys, you know. But you know, you guys know how I deal already. So if it's gonna be a designated day and time, we're good. But I just can't flip flop all over the place because you know schedule all that. But if right. we have a designated day that we can go on at a designated time, um, if you guys want to do it weekly or how do you want to make it? Yeah, why not? Because uh, I believe stereo is two by two. Like, it's always two people. Yeah, and it's, easy, it's so easy. And it's actually quite entertaining to watch your animated self move move their lips. And, they, yeah. and, and the thing is, they move their lips exactly the way you would when you're speaking. That was crazy. I, I love it. I've listened to some great shows. Um, I attended one... My first one was one on investments, which I love that show. I started following those people immediately. And then I attended a few others. It was investment related, but there was there's a lot of stuff on mental health and healing that people talk about. And these people are not even like professionals in the field. They're people who have gone through crises and they come with the perspective of what they went through and they share that story. I'm so in tune into that. You know, to share wow. people's testimonies and everything else, and it's it's been nice. And you have some people who are on there every day, and the time goes by so fast. You know, they just yeah, you don't it. you don't really realize you don't really realize how much time passes by with using that app. I remember when when I was having that live with Shamoon that morning, we did not realize that we ended up speaking for about two and a half hours. We we're like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was cool. So I, I like that. What I like about stereo is that um, once you do the recording part, like you can do the live and it stays on, it's recorded. Mm -hmm. You can share it wherever you want and you can put it on your, your actual podcast. You know? Yeah. It was like, mm, okay, another way to repurpose content. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, that's the opportunity. So I was like, all right, so we're going to see what we're going to do. It's cool to have an animated self, too. Yes, so, I love it. I love it. Really cool. I love it. I love it. I don't even, I don't even yeah. remember how I came across it. I think, I think uh, my wife found it first and introduced it to me. And then we did like two together. And we're like, man, this is really fun. Like, I, we really liked it. When, it, when we first tried it, and then I took a break, and then I jumped back on. But man, mm -hmm. and then I started seeing commercials for it. So you know it's picking up. Something. Oh, they have commercials for it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw a, a couple of commercials, and I saw a couple of YouTube ads as well on nice. on stereo. I'm like, okay, okay. So it's starting to it's starting to, to gain some popularity. I don't know if it's like a uh, it. house it. rival or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Cooper is saying that he's gonna have to find. I guess that's me. Find me on stereo now too. Yeah, I'm Arthur Myers. Yeah, I'm yeah. the same. Same little GQ of those people. One word. Yeah. What's up, Christina? <clears throat> Welcome aboard. What What's Tin Can? You said you on Tin Can, Cooper? That's tin a new can. app. I would like to know what Tin Can is. Oh, by the way, Cooper has a nice video that he was talking about farming and apples um, that he tagged me on on Rizzle. And I think that's a very good video. I did send an award to him through Rizzle, but I need to go respond to that video. It's, it's a very, okay. very instructive video on farming, you know, with the apples and everything. And I, I definitely got to go back and respond. Thank you, Cooper, for that. That was very nice. Hmm. Huh. Now I'm curious. Now I gotta go check it out. Yeah, go check out that video. It's a dope video. Nice. What do you say? The white girl walking and listening to stereo? Who's that? I'm so confused. I know, Mr. 
Big Gene, I don't know what you're talking about. Who else? Oh, my children. Who else has something to say? Uh, oh, Dwayne. Thank Legend. y'all for rocking out with us this long. Yeah, legendary interview. GQ. Yes, very, very nice. Definitely, he he earned his credits for sure. I'm I'm I'm, 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 okay. I'm okay. I'm I'm no Martin, but I'm okay. You but you GQ though. I appreciate it. I exactly. Appreciate it. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to scroll. I'm scrolling. One bro. vision. Yep. Yep. Oh no, no. Sh- Shimon already knows. We the, the moment the moment the next episode drops at three o'clock in the morning on Friday, we're gonna be on it making theory videos and what we think is gonna happen and who we think uh, what character is gonna do what and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. It's so I've never been so intrigued about a show until now, which is weird because it was because the, the the first three episodes I'm like okay this show is trash I don't like mm-hmm. it. I don't know what's going on but then out of nowhere it was like wait a minute what what is happening like I'm strangely addicted to the show and then I start to see all these different people in like TikTok and. Facebook creating fan pages and I'm like, man, maybe this show is a big deal. So hmm. I'm, I'm hooked. Wow. I didn't know nothing about it until you guys started talking about it. And I was like, okay, let me just see what they're talking about. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a thing now. It's a thing now. So mm-hmm. it's 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 up it's at the point now where it's like every Thursday now. Uh-huh. I either I either stay stay up for a very long time until it drops. Or I go to sleep early just so I can wake up early to watch it before I go to bed. Wow. Oh, thank you, so. Daya. Daya said she's glad she came to, she got on and got to listen a lot to some of the what we were talking about. Yes, yeah, so my interview. But by all means, it's going to be posted. So you could cross reference it on Instagram, IGTV, Absolutely. and stuff. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Yes. Oh, by the way, Daya, Daya, uh, download Stereo on your phone. That's an app you want to be on. Where a lot of us are on there, and um, it's it's pretty much like a podcast style of app, but it's like you have to partner with somebody. We could actually do a show together. You know, anything referencing healing. You're in ministry, so why not? That would be cool. And that goes for everybody too. Like you guys want to do a show with me by all means, you know. As long as we know exactly what we're gonna talk about, I'm good. Right. I just want to be talking about one division and Marvel. That's just not my category. Okay? Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, but that's just not my. No, no, no. I I my, totally get it. I know it's very. It's, um, it's very. Uh, it's a. How do I put it? It's an it's an acquired taste for certain audiences. Yeah. So yeah. no, I, I totally get it. And um, and um, I don't know why my phone all of a sudden was doing the feedback. feedback. I don't know my 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 uh my chat froze, so I can't even scroll. Now. I'm just listening. Cooper says that oh, Rizzo could, could learn, learn more from Clapper, a little bit more from Clapper. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I still won't drop it though. Yeah. I, I remember back in the day where I was like, I'm not joining because of the name. Now, <laughs> now I'm on it. And I'm like, <laughs> and I now I'm you, on it. And I'm enjoying it. I was like, nah, it's not even like that. You know, just get on. And I think by the time you came on, I was well on my way. You know, but the way when I get on Clapper, like I said, it's it's just all prophetic messages. You know, it's messages that I receive basically, and I'm like, right, let me just put it out there, and it, it helps somebody. Um, mm-hmm. So my consistency on there, like I'm consistent, but it, I don't go on there every day. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like if I have a message, I have a message, but if I don't, I don't. You know? Yeah, it's not it's not something that you force. No, I'm not. I'm not going on there to show them what I'm doing during, during the day or showing them what I'm eating or anything. Like it's not like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you go there for a specific purpose, 
And that's yeah, it. that's it. You know, and that's why it's like it's a healing ministry. You know, and people be like, "Oh, thanks for sharing this. Thanks for doing that." Da da da. You know, you touched me, and that was it. And then I come back. I'm like, "Yo, when I come back, yo, you know what time it is? I got a message. Boom, dropping. I'm out. And that's it." <laughs> <laughs> So on that note, do you guys have anything else? I know we went through a handful of questions, but yeah. before we close out, by all means, if you guys have anything else that you would like to um, ask, now is your time. I think, I think we... everybody took all the good questions. I think people are intimidated now. Well, yeah, because the thing about, like, you guys came up with some really, really good questions, and some of you guys had, like, more than one question which mm -hmm. I thought was amazing. You know, I was not expecting that at all. So and they I'm weren't even just, they weren't even like whack questions. They were like very thought no. thoughtful questions. Exactly. So. Exactly. I felt, I felt like this interview was like a grand scale interview for real. You know, you yeah, guys and now people and people lo learn even more about it. Yeah, that was the opportunity. So. That's what we're for. And I, I really had a great time. I enjoyed it. So thank you all for being in attendance. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you for your participation and your commitment to the Martine Show. So on that note, I want to thank GQ for being the man of honor <laughs> to take over the show. The first takeover happened by GQ mm -hmm. on the Martine Show. Okay. And um, we're going to take it from there. Um, we're still on the Black History Month. We do have some other young African Americans who we're going to continue the month with that we're going to highlight. So come back on Tuesday. Um, as you all know, I'm into interviewing non-Rizzo members now as well as Rizzo members. So we're expanding little by little and we're moving yeah. forward. I did announce that the Martine Show is also on podcast now. So y'all can check it out. Go follow the Martine Show on Anchor. Spotify, Google Cast, Google Public, yeah, Google Radio Podcast, Public, uh, so many others, you know. But um, yeah, we're gonna drop that, and the blog is in the works. Uh, just need a a couple of technical things that um my tech guy needs to fix, and that's it. But it's it's pretty jam packed. It's full, and everything else is gonna come your way. I'll I'll make the announcements. Um. Eventually, look for the newsletter that should be shooting out soon. I don't have an accurate date yet, but sometime next month, you know, in your emails, y'all get an updated newsletter as to what's going on with the Martine Show and me as well. So we'll always be connected for a while. All right. All right. On that note, we're going to sign off. Take care. Take care. Have a good one. You too. Good night, all. Good night.